Hey everyone, Pastor Tim here, coming to you from hot Peoria, Arizona. Good to be with you today. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Today we're beginning a brand new series called Not Your Parents, or maybe for some of you, Not Your Parents Sunday School Stories. Uh, What we're going to do over these next several weeks is we're going to look at some of those great iconic stories, most of them from the first book of the Bible. These wonder-filled stories that, for those of us who grew up in Sunday school when we were kids, captured our imaginations. And when I was a kid, I remember that sometimes the teacher would tell these stories using the iPad of the 1960s was the flannel board. And so we would have the story of the creation, and maybe the teacher would put up various little things on the uh, the the iPad on the flannel board uh, to show what uh, the creation story looked like. Of course, we had the story of Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden with Adam and Eve strategically placed behind certain bushes and that iconic, warm, fuzzy story, Noah and the Ark, when Noah would bring animals two by two into the Ark. And these really, really were stories that captured our imaginations. But then as we got older and started to read those stories, there were questions that these stories raised, questions that maybe our Sunday school teachers weren't able to answer, and questions that in some churches you're not even allowed to ask. For example, in the creation story, how is it possible to have three days, daytime and nighttime, without a sun or a moon? In the story of Adam and Eve, you have two people, Adam and Eve, they have two children, Cain and Abel. Cain murders Abel, and yet Cain is afraid of all of these people who might take vengeance on him. Who are all these people and where did his wife come from? And the story of Noah and the ark, for all the warm fuzziness of all those animals coming onto the ark, at least two big questions. Why in the world did Noah bring on mosquitoes? Could have saved the world from all kinds of hassle. And secondly, isn't that story really about a genocide on a universal scale perpetrated by God? So these warm, fuzzy, wonderful stories of our childhood seem to raise a lot of questions. And so we're going to peel back some of the confusion, some of the misinterpretations, and look at these stories for what they are, subversive stories about the God of the universe who is actually a God of love. And so we're going to start at the very beginning, which is really a very good place to start, because when you read, you begin with... A, B, C, very good. And when you start the Bible, you begin with Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now this is a picture of what the heavens and the earth looked like for the ancient Hebrews when they heard those words thousands of years ago. Now without going into a lot of detail, they essentially believed that while the the universe, so to speak, was huge, it was also contained and that the world and universe looked somewhat like a snow globe. And so you have the land, and underneath is some water in the deep, and above the earth is the sky, which is sort of set off with a little uh, plexiglass, so to speak, from the waters, and there are little sluices in the plexiglass where the rain would come through, and at the top of the snow globe, so to speak, was heaven, and that's where God sat. So when they heard the words, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth, they visualized this sort of cosmos. When we hear those words in 2023, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth, this is what we see. We see a universe that is vast beyond our imagination and continues to expand to this day. To give you a little perspective, the nearest star to planet Earth is Optima Centauri. It is about 4.2 billion light years away from planet Earth, give or take a quarter mile. Now to understand how far that is, Mars is 36 million miles away from us. It would take our fastest rocket ship nine months to get there. It would take that, take that same rocket ship 33,000 years to get to the nearest star to our planet, and we know that the universe is far, 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 far beyond that closest star. It is vast. And so where the ancients sort of saw the world as capped, we know that the universe 
is expansive and ever expanding. And so one of the questions you could ask right away is, well, then where's heaven? Where does God sit? And so Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, the very first verse of the Bible, shares with us an important insight into understanding the Bible and these wonderful Sunday school stories. And the key is this. To understand that the Bible was not written to us. The Bible was written to a particular group of people at a particular time, speaking a particular language in a particular place with a particular worldview and a particular understanding of the cosmos, which is radically different from how we understand the world today. It was written to them in their language, using their worldview. So the Bible wasn't written to us, it was written to them. But the Bible is written for us. Which means that once we understand how they understood it, the eternal message of those scriptures, those stories, still speak to us to this day. Now, the creation story is one of those stories that has caused all kinds of confusion over the generations because it's been so misinterpreted. And it's caused many people over the years to laugh at people like us who take this story seriously. And it's caused many Christian people, especially Christian young people, to lose their faith altogether. Because many of our Christian young people are taught that Genesis chapter 1 is a literal, historic story of how the world was created. That God created the world in seven days over 6,000 years ago. And when they see the science, it says that's not true at all. And if you can't trust Genesis chapter 1 verse 1, the first story in the Bible, you can't trust the rest of it. And so what we're going to see over these next several weeks is that these stories are not literal, historic stories. In fact, as we'll see in a moment, the writer didn't even intend for us to understand it that way. These are theological stories that still have something important to say to us today in 2023 about God, the creator behind the universe. And so that's what we're going to focus on for a few minutes today. And before I share with you some insights from Genesis 1, Uh, and what it has to say about God. Let me give you a couple fun facts about Genesis itself uh, and the first story because it helps us understand what's going on here. First fun fact is that the number seven plays a prominent role throughout the first creation story. Now seven is a, a number for perfection in the Bible, which means when this number seven is used metaphorically, it means that it was done right. It was done perfectly. That what was made is exactly how it was meant to be made. It is fit for purpose. And so Genesis chapter 1, verse 1 in Hebrew is seven words long. Verse 2 is 14 words long, which of course is seven times two. That's followed by seven paragraphs outlining seven days of creation. God's name is repeated 35 times, which is seven times five. Heaven and earth are both repeated 21 times, which is seven times three. And the word good is used six times, and the seventh time, very, is added before it for emphasis. And then to wrap it all up, the seventh day is mentioned three times in three sentences of seven words each. And so what the writer is doing here is he's using that number seven and three not to tell us how the world was created, but that the world was created well. It was, it's fit for purpose. It's designed and created the way God wanted it to be created. It's a story about God, not how the world came to be. Secondly, this story is what we would call today propaganda. Now, I'm guessing that's not the word that your teacher used in Sunday school. Propaganda means that this story was written to compare and to contrast the God of Israel with the gods of the surrounding cultures. And when we put those two pieces together, we begin to understand what the creation story is telling us and why it still speaks to us in 2023. So here are a few insights. Here are a few things that the writer of Genesis chapter 1, the creation story, wants us to understand about God and why this God is a God above all gods and why this God matters to you. The first insight is this, that God is a God who brings order out of chaos. 
God is a God who brings order out of chaos. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, verse 1. Verse 2, and the earth was a formless void, and the Spirit of God hovered over the darkness. What verse 2 says is there's chaos all around. And so in the next several verses, over the next several days, God brings order out of that chaos. In the first three days, God creates the scaffolding for creation. Day one, he creates light. Day two, he, cre- he takes and uh, separates uh, the, the waters from the sky, so he creates the sky. Day three, he creates the land and the water. And then days four, five, and six, he fills in the scaffolding with the sun and the moon on day four, with the sea animals and the sky animals on day five, and the land animals and humans on day six. And then on day seven, God rests. And so the point here is to say that the God behind creation is a God who brings order out of chaos, or we could say harmony out of chaos, peace out of chaos, life out of chaos. That's the God behind creation. And by the way, starting in Genesis chapter 3, we're going to see how human beings started to put chaos back into order. So the second thing then the story of Genesis teaches us, the creation story, is that God is God of all. So in the surrounding cultures, they worshipped the sun. They worshipped the moon. And even in 2023, people still worship aspects of nature. And what the biblical writer wants to say is that God is the creator, and God alone. The sun isn't a god, the moon isn't a god, the trees are not divine, there's not a divine spark in human beings, God is not enmeshed in creation. God is separate from creation. God is the creator. And as creation, as we look at the massiveness of creation, it moves us to worship this God, to bow down in awe before this God, and to live in relationship with this God. Insight number three says that God created the world out of goodness. So the surrounding cultures believe that the world was created out of violence, and out of murder. There was a battle between the gods, and one god defeated the other, killed that god, murdered that god, and then out of the carcass of that god created the world. By the way, ew. What the Bible says is that the world wasn't created out of violence or murder. It was created out of goodness. God spoke it into existence. And what God spoke was good over and over again. This is a world that was created out of love and out of passion and out of love or compassion and mercy. This is a good God who creates only out of goodness. And then finally, the Genesis story wants us to know that this God who created the universe is a God who wants a relationship with us. In the other stories, the surrounding stories, the gods created human beings so that human beings could feed the gods. In the Genesis story, God creates human beings and all of creation so that God can provide for us, so that God can lavish an eternity of grace on us. God created us to live in relationship with God and then calls us as human beings to partner with God to care for all creation. And so what we have in Genesis chapter 1, the creation story, is not a story about how the world was created, but we have an ancient story written to a particular group of people with a particular understanding of the cosmos that's different from ours, but it's a story about God and what this God is like, and that this God who created the world is a God of love. So if we were to write that creation story today in 2023, we'd probably add a few little nuances to it. For example... In the beginning, 13.8 billion years ago, God began to speak, and the world exploded. The universe exploded into existence, and it continues to explode into existence even to this day because God has not stopped speaking. God continues to sing over the universe. And at some point, God began to sing again about a sun and a moon, and 4.5, 4.6 billion years ago, the sun exploded into being, followed by the earth. And then as God continued to sing and creation began to grow and evolve, God said, let us make human beings in our image. 
And 300,000 years ago, Homo sapiens began to evolve and to move on planet Earth. And 90,000 years ago, human beings, pretty much as we know them now, with the ability to speak and to think, started to walk planet Earth in the image of God. And God continues to create to this day. But 2,000 years ago, something significant happens. Now think about perspective for a moment. God began to create 13.8 billion of our years ago. Human beings came around between 300,000 years and 90,000 years ago. But 2,000 years ago, the creator entered into human history in Jesus, in a particular time, in a particular place, to remind us that the creator of the world loves us and is for us. And even though we vented the full force of human chaos onto Jesus and killed him, Jesus rose from the dead and has since then been busy singing over creation, bringing order back to chaos through grace and compassion and mercy. And that's the God that Genesis chapter 1 doesn't want you to miss. This God who is beyond anything we can imagine, and yet this God cares for you. This God knows you. This God loves you. And this God invites you to follow Jesus in bringing order and grace and compassion to the world that God loves. Amen. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks. He broke it. He gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body broken for you. Eat this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink and said, This is my blood. It's been poured out for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Drink this for the remembrance of me. Let's pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, 
who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for you, and for his sake God forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained minister of the gospel, I declare to you the entire forgiveness of all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. As you eat that piece of bread or that cracker that you have, this is the body of Christ, and it's given for you. And as you drink the wine or grape juice, this is the blood of Christ shed for you. And now, may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you unto everlasting life. Peace be with you. Amen. It's good to be with you again today, and i um, glad that you're joining us. And if we can serve you in any way, uh, one of the things that you can do right now, if you'd like, you can just write us a little note in Facebook or on YouTube, and maybe just say hi, or if we can pray for you, say pray for me about, we'd be happy to do that. Uh, if you're watching to us today for the very first time, we want to send you a little token of our appreciation. We're going to send you a card to Starbucks if you text the word new to 623-295-2484. We're not going to follow up. We're not going to bother you. It's just our way of saying thanks. It's a gift of grace. Thanks for joining us, and we hope you will join us again soon. And so we hope you enjoy this gift. We would like to pray for you as well. You can text the word prayer to 623-295-2484, 623-295-2484, and we'll pray for you. Or you can text the word events. We've got a lot of things happening now this summer as we move through July into August and then into the fall. If you'd like to know more about what's happening, 623-295-2484. Text the word events to that number. Uh, yesterday... We had a funeral in this building for one of our longtime members. Uh, this church, we're coming up on 19 years, but we were planted by Community Church of Joy, where I was the associate pastor. And Bob and Joan Hawks were some of the people who came with us. And Bob passed away uh, not too long ago at the age of 91. And I was telling the story uh, yesterday at his service uh, about uh, a worship service that we were doing. We used to do Saturday night worship until COVID hit and changed everything. And my son and his wife were our worship leaders. And my son, Mike, for some reason, liked to worship or lead worship barefoot. Well, one of our members wasn't all that keen on a barefoot person leading worship, and she let me know that. And Bob happened to overhear. And so Bob, who served communion every Saturday night, took his shoes off and served communion barefoot. And it's such a perfect picture uh, for me of what the gospel is all about that we enter into solidarity with anyone and everyone because Jesus does. There are no walls. There are no boundaries to God's grace. And yesterday after the service, uh, a woman came up to me. And she said, this seems to be a church that just welcomes people with open arms. And that's what we want to be. We want to be a place of reckless, radical grace that lets people know that this creator loves them. This creator loves you. And so if you believe in that mission and how important it is today in a world so filled with ungrace to be a church of grace, and you want to support what we're doing, and you want to support what we're doing coming online to you every week, you can text a gift to 623-295-2484. In the message, you type in how much you'd like to give. You send it to that number. You'll notice that there's a QR code right here, and if you're savvy enough, if you turn your phone on and then your camera on and hold it up to the TV screen to that card right or that QR code, it's going to bring you to some prompts. You just fill those out and it will enable you to give to Community of Grace. And you notice at the bottom, it says boldrecklessgrace.org slash giving, and that will give you some opportunities to give on an ongoing basis. And when we talk about giving here, uh, we just invite you to give what God encourages you to give. And it's through your giving that all this happens, and if you want to participate, we invite you to do so. And we thank you very, very much for doing that. So we're going to be back with you now next week in this series, and we're going to talk about the big fall, uh, Adam and Eve, and we're going to ask those big questions. Do we really believe in talking snakes, and did an apple really change everything? And so we're going to look at what that story has to say about God, about us, and about God's relationship with us. And uh, I think you'll find it transformational. I hope you'll join us. We come to you every Saturday night at 5 o'clock, Facebook and YouTube. It goes on demand after that, so you can watch us anytime. We always get together every Sunday morning at 9 and 10.30. If you'd like to join us live here in Peoria, Arizona, we'd love to have you. 
all the information of things coming up, boldrecklessgrace.org. That's boldrecklessgrace.org. So now as you go, may our loving Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face smile upon you and be gracious to you. And may the Lord always turn his face toward you and give you peace in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go bold and live grace. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let all heaven and earth proclaim. He is King and He reigns. Praise the Lord. Lift your voices and sing it now. Say, let all people rejoice in me for all the great things He's done. His mercy stands to fall. Blessed be your name, Jesus.